If time travel was a real thing, and you're able to go back in time to make one little change, how big of an effect would it have on the world? Think about it for a moment. Would you use it to your advantage to change your life? Or would you attempt to change a major event in history? Take Pearl Harbor, for example. On November 5th, 1941, a Japanese spy was given a mission that caused the attack on December 17th to be so successful. If they were caught, would the attack on Pearl Harbor have happened? It's amazing how one event can change the entire world. Welcome to Time Capsule, where we take you on a journey through time. Join us as we unlock the past and preserve the present for future generations to discover and explore. Today is November 5th, and we have a lot of history to dig up. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. You're watching Now You Know More. On November 5th, 1941, Shigeru Suzuki was in Pearl Harbor to meet up with Takio Yoshikawa, a spy who was planted in Hawaii on a mission to monitor the activities and movement of the American fleet in Pearl Harbor. Suzuki made a list of 97 questions that he had written down on a tiny ball of crumpled rice paper that he had given to Yoshikawa. Yoshikawa was given 24 hours to respond with his answers, but he had so much more than that. Not only did he give details about the movement of the fleet and planes, but he also provided detailed maps, sketches, and photos. If only American intelligence was able to take notice of Yoshikawa and Suzuki, the attack on Pearl Harbor might not have ever happened at all, or at least it might not have been so devastating. Let's move on to another event that took place on November 5th, although the effects of it took more than 40 years to finally make a difference. Susan B. Anthony. She was raised in a very politically active family who was part of the abolitionist movement that worked to end slavery. But Susan became frustrated by the fact that she was not able to speak at certain conventions, simply because she was a woman. This shifted her focus to concentrate more on women's rights. And it was on November 5, 1872, that she decided to vote in the presidential election, even though it was illegal for women to vote at the time. Susan was arrested and fined $100 for the act. That would be worth about $2,500 in today's money. But Susan refused to pay it. Then, 47 years later, Congress finally passed the 19th Amendment, giving American women the right to vote. The amendment was nicknamed the Susan B. Anthony Amendment. Another event that happened on November 5, 1937, was when the Hossbach Memorandum took place. This was a meeting with Adolf Hitler and his military and other foreign policy leaders, where Hitler made an announcement that due to the fact that Germany was struggling with its economy, he had decided he wanted to go to war, but not with Britain or France, but with Austria and Czechoslovakia. He wanted their resources, primarily coal and iron. This moment in time is controversial, as some historians say that this was a call for war. Others say it was nothing more than a political stunt. I'm not so sure I agree with them. But let's get away from the doom and gloom for a while. Did you know that the Monopoly game was originally called The Landlord's Game? It was designed by Elizabeth Maggi and patented in 1904. But it was on November 5, 1935 that Parker Brothers started marketing and selling the game for themselves. Since then, they have sold 275 million Monopoly games. That's pretty impressive if you ask me. Before we move on to birthdays, do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button so YouTube knows just how much you enjoyed this video and then they'll recommend it to others as well. Thank you so much for helping my channel grow. Did you know Roy Rogers, an American singer, actor, and television host, was born on November 5, 1911? His family resided in an apartment complex on 2nd Street in Cincinnati, Ohio. That is now the location of the Riverfront Stadium. Roy always joked that he was born on second base. We have another birthdayer who was born on November 5th in Ohio, Jason Cleese. Jason is an American football center for the Philadelphia Eagles, a Super Bowl champion, and while he was going to school at Cleveland Heights, he played the baritone saxophone in the symphonic and jazz bands. And last but not least, Natalie Schaefer was born on November 5, 1900 in Red Bank, New Jersey. She began her career in Broadway and took part in 17 plays between 1927 and 1959, but she was best known as Miss Howell on the sitcom Gilligan's Island. 
I'm curious, when is your birthday? Comment the month down below and you might be selected to be featured in an upcoming video. And let's see who's the smartest of you. Can anybody tell me what Mrs. Howe's first name is? The first person who answers correctly will have their comment pinned at the top. Up next is Fast Facts. Are you ready? Are you set? Here we go. November 5th is known as Gunpowder Day because in 1605, Guy Fawkes was arrested in the cellar of the House of Parliament because he had planted gunpowder in an attempt to blow up the building and kill King James I of England. In 1895, George B. Selda was granted the first U.S. patent for an automobile. In 1940, Franklin D. Roosevelt was the first and only president in the United States to be elected to a third term. In 1991, Tropical Storm Thelma caused flash floods in the Philippines, killing more than 4,900 people. In 2006, Saddam Hussein, the former president of Iraq, and his co-defendants were sentenced to death for the rules in the 1982 massacre of 148 Muslims. Then, in 2007, China's first lunar satellite goes into orbit around the moon. November 5th is also known to be American Football Day, National Redhead Day, and Book Lovers Day. Now it's time to plan ahead. Did you know you only have 50 days left till Christmas? Better get those lists and that budget out. And while you're doing that, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss an upcoming episode on Now You Know More. And with that, I will leave you with the joke of the day. Why does November love the Macy's Day Parade? That's because it's always a moving performance. Hey guys, take care, stay safe, and thanks for listening.